Welcome back to MCOCL Bundy Rules. I have the champion 6.2.6 boss fight here even using Symbiote Supreme. So some of you who watch my channel might be thinking, is this a duplicate post? It is not. It is not. I actually had to remove this video last week when I was having some major audio issues. Half the audio just completely went out on here. Therefore, I went ahead and removed it from the channel and waited till I fit had the audio issue fixed, which I now do with the new microphone, and decided to re-record and repost at this point. So, let me get us caught up where we're at now. We'll notice at the beginning of the spot I was doing no damage. The reason for that is the note I had up was only damage can be done if I have at least a 15 hit combo meter. That's very important to know, one, why I did no damage for my first 15 hits. Second of all, why it's so important I do not take any hits. If I want to clean solo, I have to play careful, I have to play smooth because one single hit can cause serious issues. There's really three main phases for this fight. Starting off beginning is pretty simple. Um, with the act of no 15 hits, I just had to get my 15 hit counts up. I'm pretty much doing five hit combos in order to go ahead and try to keep staggers going with this fight and I'm going to focus mainly on S3s is going to be my preferred choice for specials and for damage purposes. At 70% he's going to switch play style. The big part of this fight style now is that his light attacks are going to become unblockable. This is very important because this explains why I keep dashing back and I'm trying to be careful because if I try to parry close up then there is a good chance that I might go ahead and take a light attack which would be unblockable which would start me over in this fight pretty much based on the fact of the 15 hit combo. So after 70%, I'm dashing back before I try to parry. I don't want to try to parry close up. Very important. Otherwise, I'm keeping my my staggers up as much as possible because that is going to completely nullify those regenerations and unstoppables, which is a big part of making this fight much harder. Now we see the main event at 40%. This now switches my play style. At this part, medium attacks now become unblockable. This is important because what I've been doing for most of the fight is not going to be effective anymore and it can get very ugly for me if I try once again with that 15 hit combo meter. So now I'm not even going to risk pairing because I can't guarantee that I can make him do a light attack. I can increase the probability by staying closer but I still can't guarantee that therefore I am going to either work on intercepting which can be risky and I need to be careful because one little misstep on an intercept I have to start over with the 15 hit combo so what I'm going to do he's very aggressive it's easy to push him to s1 and it's easy to evade the s1 so what I'm going to try and do is just keep baiting these s1s as much as possible and then punishing it so we'll see several in a row there where I'm keeping the stagger up and I am pushing him to that S1. I'll bait it out and then push him to S1 again repetitively. Makes it nice and easy for me to keep the combos going in. It's a very low risk strategy in order to maximize damage. Keep in mind I went into this fight not even with the full health. I have not lost very much health thus far which is going to be very important for the last part of this fight. The last 10% of this fight is really going to be the trickier part where you're going to have to take, unless you have practiced so, so much, you're going to have to take some decent block damage. So I need to save as much health as I can for around this point right there. And you see that deck. So that last part, what I highly recommend is going to search up the champion and practice dueling them as much as humanly possible. Emphasis on that S1 because I cannot do any damage under 10% at the 10% unless I have three prowess and get by getting rid of those indestructibles. We see my timing on that one was just off. My first dex attempt on S1 was good. I took off an indestructible. Watch your watch. That boom. You saw how the prowess came up. So now I, there were three indestructibles. I've taken off two by dexting the last part of that special one. Each time I properly Dex the very, very last portion. Watch again right here. Watch the timing and there. And then you see the third indestructible is now off. I have the third prowess now. Now I can do damage. I cannot do damage before then. The biggest part of this is practicing dexing that S1. Do not go into this fight without practicing that a lot. I recommend just doing duels over and over and over. 
in order to really have that down before you go there. Otherwise, you're going to regret it. Trust me, it takes exact timing on that. I'm hoping this video helped you get through this fight. And don't forget to click that link on the top left if you have not already done so to subscribe to MCOC Al Bundy Rules. And again, thanks so much for watching.